Hi, I'm Peter Zorn and I am a transformation expert. I've been working in the transformation field for uh, over 20 years, working with many multinational organizations, uh, both from a consulting side as well as in-house, and primarily uh, approaching it from the concept of lean thinking, not necessarily around specific tools and techniques, but more around the philosophy of what it takes to lead people along the journey of transformation for a whole organization. Well, I think you have, you have both the obvious and perhaps the less obvious aspects. From an obvious perspective, uh, you know, we talk about changing consumer uh, ways in which they're buying products and services. We've got the digitization aspect. We've got a whole changing marketplace. And that's what everybody's talking about. But I think in terms of the less obvious aspect, it's how do you bring your people on the journey with you? Because it's one thing to say we'll install new systems, we'll put in new processes to deliver things more effectively, but you actually need people who are going to be there along this journey who are helping you to make it come true. And one thing that we see nowadays is no matter what industry you're in, you're actually competing for the same talent. So any type of organization you look at, you've got operations, IT, risk, finance, all of these different types of um, skill sets that are required. And so why should talent come to your organization instead of someone else's? So I think really when we look at transformation, it's not just about transforming the way we deliver services to our customers, but it's actually about how we bring our people on this journey of transformation with us to make sure that they're bought into this and that they understand why we're going through this because change and this kind of transformation activity can be very unsettling for a lot of people. So how do you make sure that you've got all of your people going in the same direction to deliver what it is you want to be? I think one of the things that we need to clarify first of all is the difference between change management and transformation because for the last 10 years Everybody's been talking about, we need to increase our change management, we, we need to change more, um, we need bigger portfolios of projects and programs to deliver. But actually, when you think about it, companies are spending more and more and more money on change management. But I think now people are coming to the realization that actually for all the money we spend in the world, we're not actually necessarily delivering the real change that we need. And that's why I think we're now starting to see all of this focus around transformation. However, I think there's this legacy of change management mindset where people are saying, I need to deliver X by a certain date, um, quarter by quarter results. When are we going to have this finished? And the whole concept that transformation is not a project. It's not about you start something today and you have transformed tomorrow. And I think this, looking at this time frame perspective, looking at the, the commitment that it takes to truly transform an entire organization from top to bottom is extremely important. We all know that when we're driven by quarterly results, um, there's always this concept of what's the next best thing. We've seen it when we talk about Six Sigma and Lean, we've seen it in other aspects of change management. People expect to see results extremely quickly and after 18 months or two years, they say, well, we've, we achieved something on this journey and therefore we're now finished with it. The concept of transformation is something that's ongoing and it becomes part of the DNA of the organization as it evolves. So it's not just about one particular sponsor or one particular leader in the organization, it's actually about the whole organization on this road to transform itself. And I think that to me is one of the most important aspects that you have to understand before you even begin the transformation journey. And secondly, it's what do we want to be when we grow up? Again, when you talk about change management or specific projects, you know exactly what you want to be delivered in the end, but it's a very micro part of an organization. If you're talking about transforming the organization, then really what do we want to be when we grow up? What is the vision? And have we got everybody bought into it? And not just informed, because transformation is not about somebody sitting in a, 
in an ivory tower sending out lots of emails saying, you will behave like this, you will do that, we will be this. But actually, have you connected and engaged with them? And how do you know that you've got everybody moving in the same direction to achieve the results that you want to achieve? So I think that's a, a fundamental difference from the last 10 years where we've been very focused on change management. I think the, the first thing that you need to, to look at is understanding the time frame. Again, going back to the fact that this is not a specific time-bound exercise. So we're not looking at delivering X result on a certain date and then closing out the project or closing out the budgets. Because we, as organizations, all operate on annual budget cycles, and people are expecting the results to come through very quickly, you have the risk that you start with uh, a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of, uh, you know, sort of people saying, yes, we want to do this, let's all get on board, let's go ahead. But then you get to a point where people start to lose interest, we get budget cuts coming through the year, and certainly as we go into the following year, they say, well, you know, we need to cut some things, and this seems like a nice to have, but if we don't really know why we're doing it, then why am I going to sign off on further budget to do this for the next year and beyond? So I think that's you know, one, one of the most important things. You also have to be able to articulate, why am I doing this? To say, like everybody else says, consumer trends are changing, digitization is key for us, we need to hop on the bandwagon and do what everybody else is doing. That's not a reason to transform. Certainly it's not a reason to get all of your people motivated and excited about the transformation you want to make. So I think, first of all, you need to make sure that you've got the people bought into the vision and hopefully you've involved them in what that vision is and how it's been created. All too often people bring in external parties, whether it be consultants or others, to kind of create this vision uh, for you because this is what everybody else is doing and this is what we want to be. Or you'll have your very senior management team sitting in off-sites deciding amongst themselves within the four walls of that organization or within the four walls of that room, this is what we want to be and then they push out that information. And the importance of the connection and the engagement with staff at every level is absolutely key to the success of any one of these journeys because I want to know the what's in it for me. What's in it for me whether I'm the most senior person or whether I'm the most junior person or whether you're in that middle management section, section of the organization. The what's in it for me is so important if I'm going to be speaking positively across the organization. And I say across the organization, everybody has the power to help transform the organization. Whether you be somebody who's extremely senior and you are role modeling this behavior across the entire organization as you travel across the world, or whether you're a much more junior person who happens to sit in an island of desks. And it's the attitude and the ideas that those people have that permeate, it can be the island of desks, it can be the floor, it can be the building, it can then go to the whole organization. This is extremely important for the, the connection and the engagement in terms of making sure that the vision that is being put forward is one that is believed in, and also, I think, when we talk about role modeling of behavior, a lot of organizations will have senior people that say, we want to be this, we must do that. But you don't necessarily see the authenticity of the leadership. You don't see the actions behind the words. And I, I think that that is where, in some cases, a lot of these transformation journeys fall down because the people who are in the mid-levels and more junior levels of an organization simply don't believe the messages that are coming out because they are, we're all inundated with information. Let's do this, let's do that. And people are being pulled in so many different directions and have only a limited amount of time. So where is not only the role modeling of the behavior, but you need to have those evangelists, those beacons of light that people say, I want to do this because so-and-so is doing it, I want to do it because I see what's in it for me, and I want to do it because I believe this is what we can do to be the best organization that we can be. And I also believe very firmly that 
when you're coming up with this sort of transformation vision, what you want to be, it's how do you create yourself into the best company to work for. And it doesn't mean the best company within your industry. I don't want to be sitting in a bank and saying, how are we going to be the best bank to work for? But actually, if you think about the talent that we're trying to recruit, which has the choice to go into technology, to banking, to energy, many different types of sectors, how do we create an environment that makes us the best company to work for? And I think that's part of that journey that we need to have as you as you incorporate the what is the vision of where we want to get to in this transformation experience that we're all going to go through. I th it is unfortunate that so many of these uh, transformation exercises do end in failure. One of the most obvious areas that I see time and time again is these uh, these exercises are positioned in the wrong level of the organization. You'll often find people who are three or four levels down from the board or the executive committee sitting within a particular division of the bank saying, we are going to transform the way we operate. Well, if you try to do that within one particular function or sector within an organization, you know that no particular function or process is owned by any one area of an organization. So you've got operations, you've got technology, risk, finance, you've got all the different business areas. All of these areas need to be operating in conjunction with each other and almost like a, a seamless production line from beginning to end, bringing the, the sort of manufacturing analogy to the service industry. And I see time and time again, it's not the CEO or the board that is necessarily sponsoring this. It goes down one level, two levels, three levels, even four levels below that, and you have individual silos trying to transform themselves without then the role modeling of the top senior management, without the necessary infrastructure to make this sort of transformation possible. And then you have people who are sitting almost in an island talking about how they're going to transform, but you don't have anyone else in the organization moving in tandem with them. So I think definitely the positioning and the leveling of that is quite important. You can you know, look back to the examples many years ago of Jack Welsh at GE and the almost cult that he created in the organization, that relentless pursuit of quality that everyone knew they were fighting for. We were all going in the same direction. You very, very rarely see that happening within an organization. And if it's not positioned at that top level, it's impossible to have the role modeling and the authentic behavior that you want to see across an organization. So unless you have at least the, the group level COO, the CEO, and all of the different executive committee members working together for whatever this vision is and role modeling that behavior and having people see their authenticity in this, it's going to be very difficult to make this happen because you won't then have the infrastructure in place. It can be everything from rewards and recognition uh, in terms of how, are, how am I rewarded versus how are you rewarded and the, the almost sometimes the friendly competition that can come against uh, each other in, uh, across an organization. You've got things like physical environments. If I tell you I want you to change, these are the values. I want you to collaborate more, partner more, let's work more effectively together, but I don't give you any tools, any techniques, any coaching, everything else remains exactly the same, then it's impossible for me to simply tell you to change and have that change stick. So I think it starts with the tone at the top, that beacon of light. It has to be up at that level one or that top level of the organization. From that comes the infrastructure uh, and the, the different support network that you have going across an entire organization. And because you've got the right vision that everyone is bought into and you're connecting and you're engaging with them, it's far more likely for it to become a part of the actual essence of that organization, really become part of the DNA of that company. But because that so rarely happens, it's extremely difficult to try to be someone, as I say again, in, in your ivory tower who sends out mails that this is the way we're going to behave, this is what we're going to become, come on everybody, let's get on board and do it. People will ask, but why? And I've seen this before, and you have this 
change fatigue in a way because people are being asked to do so much more with ever less resources as budgets are continually constrained. And the ironic thing is, if you go back to the, the, the concepts of lean philosophy and listening to the voice of the customer and how you add value and eliminate waste, the idea that you can have so many people across an organization with very similar types of training, with the similar ethos in terms of what we're trying to achieve, who are going after that relentless pursuit of quality and elimination of waste, you actually can do more with less. That's the, the fantastic thing about the lean philosophy. But because of all of these other aspects in terms of positioning, short-term thinking, lack of, uh, lack of the evangelism and the, the, the vision and the beacon of light, you just don't have people who are all moving in the same direction to create the best company that it can possibly be. I think first of all, you need to be able to articulate why are you doing this. And as I said before, the whole concept of uh, oh, you know, digitization, everybody's investing in new technology, all of these things are changing, etc. Yes, we all know that. that. That's pretty obvious and you don't need to tell that to anyone. That's not articulating why I personally need to change and what's in it for me. So I think an articulation of the vision of what you want to be is extremely important. In order to get to that vision, it's how have you engaged and connected with the people to come up with that vision because otherwise it might be my vision alone sitting at the top of the house and nobody else's. So I need to engage with those people. Have I engaged with them? Have we then come up with a vision that we can easily articulate? If people talk about the lift pitch, you know, if you were to get in the lift with the CEO and you have 20 seconds to tell him something, would you be able to explain the vision of what we want to be and what you're doing to contribute to that vision? And then have you also got the understanding of the time that we're talking about here and the money, because nothing comes for free, and the fact that because this isn't a program or a specific project, but rather an evolution of an organization, do we understand how long this is going to take and do we understand how we're going to measure the results? And as part of that investment, are we going to be putting in the right infrastructure that goes across an entire organization, not just in a particular silo, where we are training people in whatever it is, whatever the, the agreed methodology or the agreed ways that we want to do this, are we training people including everyone, putting the right infrastructure in place, have we got the right rewards and recognition, and do people, again, feel that they have a positive contribution to make to this, or do they feel that it's going to be done around them and they have this almost helpless feeling of, oh, what could I possibly do? This could be a risk to me. Bringing them on that journey is something that I think is absolutely crucial, and I very rarely see that done in an effective way. I think, so first and foremost, the thing you have to have is the role modeling of the right behaviors. Too often you have these big organizations talking about all the transformation they want to make, the things they want to change, but you have it done in what I call the information overload. So you don't have the authentic leadership at the top who have this defined vision that people have created. So number one would be that role modeling and that authentic behavior. Number two, once you've decided this is what we want to do, then how are you connecting and engaging with people on an ongoing basis? It's one thing to say, let's get lots of people together, come up with an amazing vision. We post it all over our buildings and then that's the last anyone ever hears from us. So how are we going beyond the information and onto the connection and engagement stages with employees on many different channels, across many different cultures, across the world. And thirdly, in order to connect and engage with them ongoing, we have to have the right infrastructure in place. That takes investment, it takes time, and it takes the constant role modeling of that senior leadership, mid-level leadership, and, and you know, right down to the very grassroots effort of the organization to be participating in that. Everyone should feel like they have access to 
training. They should feel like they have access to coaching. It can be online training. It can be you know, virtual via chat rooms. There's lots of different ways to do this. I'm not saying that everyone needs to have a personal coach, but there are ways to make sure that you get that infrastructure right so that you've got the rewards and recognitions there. You've got people who can look across an organization and spot, whether it be spot waste, spot ways to improve, spot different things they would like to change and create small focus groups or process improvement communities or whatever. These are things that need to be put in place across the globe so that everyone is able to participate in this. And you've got the, the what's in it for me question answered because people can understand from the top to the bottom of an organization and everywhere in between, this is why we're doing what we're doing. Not just the what, but really, why am I coming to work today? How am I going to make it a better place? And I understand what's in it for me in the end.